everyone. Well, today we're talking again to Dr. Brian Callan from Hands On Super Health, and he's going to talk to us today about the triad of health that Hands On Super Health um, pioneers and specialises in. So, Brian, explain to us exactly what is the triad of health. Thanks, Barbara. The triad is a concept of the body is reliant of its three main components of structure biochemistry and emotion. And these three components need to be in balance for health. For most people, structure is primary, biochemistry is second and emotion is third. There is always a shifting interplay. So it's probably fair to say that emotions are the reason that a lot of people can't lose weight, but sometimes there's valid biochemical, hormonal and other functional reasons. But it's probably to say this concept of habits are one of the reasons that it's not easy to maintain the focus of losing weight as you want. Okay, so if we talk about the physical, um, is that where you would start? We'd always start with the physical. Standing tall, moving well, having a minimum of stress in the body, a, be a better allocation of resources. Roger Sperry did work in the late 70s, he did a PhD study where he looked at the energy that the body consumed when it was distorted and his findings were that the brain activity increased exponentially the more body the body was distorted in gravity so working on some of those quite you know 30 40 year old findings we're seeing that if we can establish stability in the body and good posture for that person you optimize their energy consumption so is that what you mean by structure governs function? Totally. So if you have a level, sturdy base in legs and pelvis, the upper body in the trunk has a firm foundation to work on. And then you optimise moving, sport, sitting, standing. Hmm. Okay, so then what would you as a chiropractor do? Um, how, do you, how do you work and look at the structure? How do you find out what's wrong? We start with an initial workup that provides a basis of information. So postural x-rays will be very revealing. No one is textbook normal inside. So we will commonly see variabilities that often help to explain persistence, often see anomalies that mean you should never ever touch that area, and also see how the body's aging. The bone is the densest material in the body and when the bone is aging the body is aging faster so it's a very good indicator of background and long-term inflammatory processes so the faster the bone is aging the more all the tissues aging so we want to understand that and ensure that we get it right we do layered investigations with muscle tension and inflammation range of motion stress management all of these things tell us how that body is coping with itself right now. Okay, so that, that, that feels like it's, you, know, you get a lot of information from all the testing you do, but also the body's giving you a lot of information. It's the body's story. So because we're different personalities, some people can live in a body that's actually not operating anything like its optimum, but be quite satisfied. And other people are very conscious of the slightest deviation from perfect. So because we, we are a spectrum of sort of abilities and satisfaction, it's, it's the person's individual desire that might bring them to us. And some people stay with us for 10 or 15 years, be loving how good they can feel if they have some sort of regular checkup. And other people are very happy to leave after six weeks or three days if they feel that, that primary pain or irritation is better managed. So that's the variability of people. So how important then is, how important is the physical structure and getting that to, getting the function to work properly? How important is that for someone in terms of how they live their life? I guess, again, how you live your life will determine how important it is. If you're a builder who uses your body physically every day, having a level of comfort and ability is probably more important if you basically sell your brain every day. However, if your body is really humming physically, your brain will perform better. So clear head, sharp mind, less fatigue 
will always accompany a body that's actually structurally balanced and smooth. And I guess these, so getting the body to be structurally balanced and smooth is what makes some people able to live longer and more fulfilled lives. That would be a good observation. There's, there's an outlier and exception to every rule and I'm sure the, the, there are people who can immediately talk to the screen and say, yes, but my you know, grandmother had one leg removed and she lived to 107. Um, but it's, let's just say that there's always a, a complex of things, but it's fair to say that the more the body is in efficient smooth movement, the more you're able to accomplish and have energy left over. Okay, so then I see the second, um, the second part of your triad of health is the biochemical. So um, talk to us about that. How, how do you work with the body biochemically and what does that mean? We use numerous um, assessment tools. There's some established muscle organ relationships that will look at integrity and classical long questionnaires that are naturopathic in their focus that would help us let the person tell us how their body is to live in. So when you say naturopathic and its focus, what does that mean? Well, it's asking, say, 20 questions in all around the, how the body functions in each body system. So there'll be questions around stomach, questions about liver, questions about thyroid, and they'll ask questions that most GPs would understand are related but probably don't always draw the connections behind the tapestry that you know thinning eyebrows at the edge and um, sort of low energy and a whole lot of other spoon-shaped nails might have an implication for you know liver for thyroid adrenal and it's being able to gather this information then sift it that helps us to understand exactly what the focus is so biochemistry actually means how the body is using its food, how it's, it's or what it's it, totally. Short it's of. really it's it's food at one level and then hormones at another. So the body the body is a chemical factory. You know we can buy chem chemicals from the pharmacy, and your doctor pres prescribes chemicals to achieve a goal. But those chemicals are largely copies of chemicals that your body manufactures on its own. So the gut flora make a huge amount of, of chemicals, they make the neurotransmitters, they make most of the serotonin. You know, the, there's, the body is just constantly humming on all these levels. So we're looking really at healing capacity and how well you get the goodness out of the food that you eat. Mm. Mm. So, that, 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 so that feels really good. So it, I guess if your, if your body is working really well and it's absorbing all the goodness out of the food, then, um, then it, it, you've stabilized it and now it's absorbing all the food correctly. And so we're getting more energy because food, you become the food you eat, quite literally. Mm -hmm. The food is broken down, a large percentage of it is used for energy, but a significant percentage is used for tissue turnover. A really interesting quote is that December 31st, from January the 1st to December the 31st, most of the cells in your body are different. They're mostly replaced in 12 months. Some take longer. So that means that in that time period, you're kind of a new you, which is a really exciting and interesting prospect that you can steer what sort of new you you become. If you get the best of the food that you put in, if the neurological feedback is perfect and every cell is getting a perfect supply of oxygen, blood, nutrients, you're going to get a better class of cell next year than last year if you give it more of what it needs. Oh, that's wonderful. So, so what is the role then in um, supplements? What is the role of supplements in achieving this balance? Supplements would be called, if you like, therapeutic focused nutrition. So there's certainly a classical view that you know you can you can eat your way to health, and that would be largely true. To get a therapeutic dose of certain nutrients, it would be difficult to eat enough of the whole food. To get enough vitamin C to really sort of get on top of a cold and help you, you're not going to do well on 15 oranges. You know, that will create its own imbalance in the system. So for a therapeutic purpose, taking a concentrated form of something, either as an oil or as some sort of compound of herb, 
will give you a therapeutic benefit for that organ system that it's targeting. Mm. Right. So, so how long would somebody need to stay on a particular supplement, given that, of course, all bodies are different? Um, but do you see things writing themselves quite quickly? Some things, you could do a detox program that would be super effective in four to six weeks. Okay. If someone had a family history of a weak stomach, you know, a weak liver, they might do 12 months on a program that would be really supportive. And we look after people who really in the longer term, who might be in their 60s, that the, as I'll say to them, for as long as you're upright and breathing, you should have this sort of generalized support in your body. So it might be quite anti-inflammatory and it's um, say gut rebuilding. Mm. Some people say that you should take things like a gut flora supplement almost every day because so much of what we do in the 21st century is not helpful from you know drinking alcohol with a meal to using Listerine in your mouth to mouth wash your mouth to um, having chlorine in the water brushing your teeth with fluoride all these things are beneficial but they also disrupt the flora some of those bugs are very delicate mm -hmm. so okay so how, how do you then work out specifically what someone needs in terms of a supplement? We, we start very broad. So we always, the practice protocol is to start very broadly and let the body help itself, which it will do. You know, as you, when you break a bone, the doctor sets it, the body heals it. The body is constantly looking for ways to get better. And so if we provide broad support, the body will do most of it for itself and then a review process that allows the body to show us where it's not performing allows us to be more targeted. And so it may take six months for the body to really reveal an area that you want to work on. But you, we may intervene sooner. So if someone's got a really obvious stress pattern, they've got a very stressful period, we might look at adrenal support reasonably early on, you know, within six weeks, and they'll immediately see an improvement but they could be doing a detox at the same time. So I guess it's really a matter of catching it before it escalates into something more serious or more difficult to shift. Correct. And you know, the body is, all of us are habit bound, and but we're very quick to adapt. So I quite like the idea of seasons that it's just moving into early summer or late spring, early summer. And so when it's now 12 degrees, it feels quite cool yet Three months ago, 12 degrees was so warm, you could take a sweater off and just have shorts on because, you know, the average temperature was five degrees. So we take, don't take long to acclimatize and find a new normal. So often you don't realize the body's changed its function until you reach a critical tipping point where it's actually really not working properly. Okay, so we've talked about the physical, we've talked about the biochemical. Talk to us about the emotional. So what's the connection between the emotional and the body? Well, in some in lots of paradigms, we're emotional first and physical second. However, we're in the physical, and for most people, working with the physical is a very good starting point. Emotions probably govern our patterns of behavior a lot of the time. So if we find personally that you are maybe not achieving the goals you want. You can't apply for that new job because you have too much self-doubt or you procrastinate even putting the application in. Looking at how that pattern established, and pres we're presuming you've done an amount of work. So we've cleared the decks, we've got the body straight, we've got the gut working well, then you can look at why that might be so. And it could be an event that set that up, or it could be, um, an organ system that's actually holding you back. So in language, even in our Western fairly scientific view of life, we still talk about people being livid with anger, which is liver, or expressing their gall. They've got a lot of gall to say that, which is this concept of sort of resentment through gall stones, gall bladder, um, you know, butterflies in your stomach with excitement and not in your stomach with fear. So we do have these words that associate organs. So we want to strengthen the organ systems in phase two so that when you come to the emotions, the body's really ready to change. And then you can be your best and set some new goals, not really be hampered by your old patterns of behavior. 
So exactly how do you work with 